हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे we can begin with our song after reviewing last time's song which was uh, two weeks ago again with apologies we missed last week ah, where were we ah, we were in, in mendoza and in mendoza we had ratayatra wasn't it Yes, we had a pequeña ratiatra, a small ratiatra, in a very nice park. Um, quite a big park. And uh, we circumambulated the lake in the park. And... Yes, I think we all decided that the Lord was pleased. Even if we were a small number. Um, actually, I was thinking after that that uh, one could also make uh, harinams with palanquin with uh, small gorni deities could also be done could be done in the park and it wouldn't have to be just once in the year <laughs> could be when the weather is good and when devotees are inspired let's go to the park and chant Hare Krishna go with palanquin and uh, yeah, doesn't need a lot of organization. Could do that here in Cordoba too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Por que no? So, oh, now there's more traffic. <laughs> so last week, that is two weeks ago, we had this very sweet song, Shri Rupa Manjari Pada, Se Mora Sampada, Se Mora Bhajana Pujana, Se Mora Pranadan, Se Mora Abharana, Se Mora Jivana, Jivana. And like that, uh, the next verse is also um, in the same form. Saying that, the lotus feet of Sri, Rupi, Sri Rupa Manjari uh, are my everything, my wealth, my worship, my life, my life wealth, uh, my ornaments, my... Again, the life of my life, uh, the ocean, my ocean of mercy, uh, my fulfillment of all desires, my Veda and Dharma, my vow, my austerity, my mantra, japa, and my dharma, dharma karma. Dharma karma. Uh, so Rupa Manjari is getting is being praised in this song, and uh, the third verse says, "Let's see, the moon of the effulgence of the form of Sri Rupa Manjari shines into the heart." and makes the heart also shine back to the spiritual sky. I thought this is very nice. Uh, 
Se Rupa Madhuri Rashi Prana Kuvalaya Shashi Prapulita Hobe Nishinine. This moon shines not only not only in the nighttime, but day and night. So usually the moon shines at night. And we don't see the moon during the day, but this is a special moon. Uh, there's another moon that's praised, uh, namely Nityananda Prabhu, uh, in another song. Mm. Uh, then, in the last line, your absence from my vision is like a dose of strong poison. And I will suffer till the end of my life. Narutam says, please give me your mercy and the shade of your lotus feet. Hmm. So this was Rupa Manjari, and now today's song is about... Rupa Goswam, presumably. Yeah. Um, Shuniyachi Sadhu Mukhe Bole Sarvajan Shri Rupa Kripai Mile Jugala Charan. I have heard from the mouths of the saintly devotees that everyone says, that by the mercy of Srila Rupa Goswami, one may approach the lotus feet of the divine couple. Shunyachi uh, is, of course, I. It's translated in the past tense, I have heard. I don't know, I think it can also be, it's more like present tense, but I'm not sure. Shunyachi, hearing. <clears throat> sadhu muke from the sadhu's mouth. Bole sarvajan. All, all people say, <laughs> what do they say? Shri Rupa Kripai, by the Kripa of Shri Rupa, Mile Jugala Charana. The Charana, the feet, uh, specifically. You could say divine feet. Charana seems to, it's, it's um, I don't know, respectful form of feet, <laughs> seems like. Um, and yugala, ju jugala in Bengali, jugala means uh, the pair, the two. Of course, referring to Radha and Krishna. <laughs> And Mile uh, will meet, will approach. Aha Prabhu Shonatan Gora Parivar Shave Mili Bancha Purna Koroho Amar. O Sanatan Prabhu, O personal associate of Lord Chaitanya. Please fulfill my desire. So we get this exclamation again, ha ha. <laughs> In English, ha ha means ha, very funny. But no, here it's it can be an expression of lamentation or longing. <clears throat> um, and uh, I think also joy like Hanta, Haha Prabhu Shonatan, Gora Parivar. You are a Parivar, you're an associate of Gora, of Goranga. Parivar, uh, um, as I understand, has the sense of uh, the persons who are surrounding another person. Pari hmm. means around, vara, uh, vara, 
I think has the sense of inclusion, but may have the sense of choice, vada in short a. So in any case, the associates of Goranga, there's a painting I've seen of Lord Chaitanya and his associates where it shows uh, many, many associates sort of in specific orders. They're all kind of lined up. Um, as I remember, Panchatattva are in the front or in the top and they're facing the viewer. And then there's different associates on the left and right side. And then there's other associates that are kind of more like facing Lord Chaitanya. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me that picture of, mm, in my mind, there's paintings also of the Buddha with his uh, many associates or his uh, students and they're all uh, assembled listening. Hmm. Okay. Sri Ruper Kripa Jeno Ama Protihoi She Poda Ashrai Jar She Mahashoi. Please fulfill my desire. Um, that saintly Srila Rupa Goswami may be merciful to me. <clears throat> and that I will be able to take shelter of his lotus feet. Uh, so Mahashoy um, means like um, Mahant or a, a great person. So it's referring to Rupa Goswami, and She is this very, this very great person. Vancha Purna, uh, whoops, where am I? That's the previous verse. Uh, but anyway, back to the second verse, Vancha Purna. We, we have the mantra, Vancha Kalpa Taru Vyascha. Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitana Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha. So Vancha Kalpaturu. Vancha means desire. And a Kalpaturu is a, 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 a taru is a tree and a Kalpataru is a, a Kalpa can mean lots of things. <laughs> Um, can mean a resolve, like an intention, something like that. Anyway, a kalpa taru is a wish fulfilling tree. Mm, and here, vancha purna, fulfilling purna means full. Vancha purna koro. Um, okay, back to verse three. <laughs> Shri Rupa er Kripa, by the Kripa, the mercy of Rupa, Ama Proti Hoy, uh, there will be Hoy means is, exists, uh, Proti Hoy with respect to me, something like that. She Poda uh, Ashroy, uh, this this foot, literally a one foot, but presumably meaning both feet, <laughs> two feet. Ashraya, the shelter, and Jara, whose se mahashoy. Please fulfill my desire. Um, that's sort of... Hmm. Yeah. Please fulfill my desire that saintly Srila Rupa Goswami may be merciful to me. Shri Rupa Kripa, 
and that I will be able to take shelter of his lotus feet. Okay. Shepada Ashray. Prabhu Lokanath Kobe Shonge Loya Chabe Shri Ruper Pada Padne More Shamar Pibe Shamar Pibe When will my master, Lokanath Goswami, place me at the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami? So Kabe is the question word, when? Uh, when will it be? Prabhu Lokanath. Lokanath uh, is the guru of uh, Naratandas. Kabe Shange Loya Jabe. Loya is uh, having taken, I think. Mm, Jabe will go. Having taken, will go where? To the Sangha, to the association. Association of who? Sri Ruper Padapadme at the lotus feet of Rupa. Of Rupa. Rupera means of Rupa. More sham, shamar pibe. What is that? Um, oh, okay. Samar, no, arpana. Yeah. Okay, I think I know. So there's the word samarpana, which means to offer completely, just giving. And this is future tense, uh, will give. So when will Lokana Goswami dedicate me, give me completely? When will he take me and go and give me? <laughs> into the association of Rupa Goswami. Yeah, something like that. Hanodina ki hoibe mor narma shaki gane anugata naratame koribe shasane. When, by your mercy, Uh, will your faithful follower, Narutam Das, become eligible uh, to receive direct instruction from the gopi friends of the divine couple? Hmm. He's getting a lot in there. Okay. Shasana uh, means instruction. Koribe Shasane. Uh, will give, will make, will do instruction. And uh, Narma Saki Gana. The Saki, Sakis are the friends of Radha and Krishna. Saki Gana means the group of friends. And Narma means uh, intimate, Narma Saki. These are a certain category. Priya Narma Saki, they're also called. And uh, who are the Priya Narma Sakis? Well, uh, as I understand, they're the, the Ashta Sakis. Can we remember their names? Let's see if we can remember. <laughs> There's Tunga Vidya. Uh, there's uh, Induleka, Sudevi, and, uh, well, of course, Lalita Vishaka, Champakalata, uh, Rama, Rama Devi, Ramas, Rama Sudevi, Champakalata, uh, and Vish. Uh, Ranga Devi. Huh? Ranga Devi. There's Ranga Devi. Yes. Don't forget Ranga Devi. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. All right. Shall we try singing this? Before we do, we will click the 
Richmond musicians on. Yes. Okay. And let's put this here. Okay. Hare Krishna, Krishna 
Yes, Naratam is Naratam Das Thakur is uh, singing another when oh when song, <laughs> a song of uh, longing, Lalasa. This is Lalasa song number two. Uh, and yeah, I think it's interesting that first we had um, the previous song was about. Rupa Manjari and how Srila Rupa Manjari is everything. And who is Rupa Manjari? It is the same as Rupa Goswami. Now he's singing to, not to Rupa Goswami, he's singing to, it seems he's singing to uh, his guru, Lokanath. Lokanath. Swa Goswami or Prabhu, and he's um, also addressing Sanatan Goswami. <laughs> Sanatan Goswami is the older brother. Uh, he's the older brother of Ruba Goswami in their forms as Goswamis. And uh, so it's interesting that, especially I find interesting that he's addressing Lokanath Swami and asking, when are you going to bring me to Rupa Goswami? Hmm. So, uh, so apparently, one second here, get my self organized. Um, Apparently, apparently it's bona fide <laughs> to pray to the spiritual master to bring one to the senior to the to the previous spiritual masters, so to say. Um, and of course, the devotees uh, we are known as Rupa Anugas. Mm -hmm. Followers of Rupa Goswami. Uh, ga, the, the word ga from gum means to go. Anu means following. So anuga, following, going after. And uh, Rupa is Rupa. So we are Rupa Anugas, Rupa Anugas. Uh, followers of Rupa Goswami. Why are we followers of Rupa Goswami? Well, uh, especially because of his guidance in the matter of rasa. He is our rasa acharya. And devotees are interested in rasa. Devotees want to relish rasa. And we are invited also to relish rasa um, by... None other, none other than Srila Vyasadeva, right? Nigama kalpa taror galitam palam shukumukad amrita dravasamitam pi vata bhagavatam rasamalayam mahuraho rasika bhuvibhavaka. He's inviting us um, as rasikas, as connoisseurs to drink and how do we drink? Satam prasangan mama virya samvido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana kata. Hrit karna. I've explained this before that Prabhupada translates hrit karna uh, as the heart and the ears, which is perfectly correct um, Sanskrit analysis of a samasa, of a, um, a compound, uh, it can also be analyzed in a different way so that it becomes the 
um, the heart ears, the ears of the heart. So uh, suggesting that one wants to listen not with the mind and the brain and the analytical, critical, fault-finding <laughs> uh, uh, brain, but uh, with the heart, which is, yeah, we could say that the heart is synthesizing and it's bringing together. Uh, as, uh, again, Narutam is saying, sadhus, Sadhu Shastra Guru Vakya. Hridoye Kuriya Aikya. May all of these words of the Sadhu Shastras and Guru come into my heart in one single uh, understanding. So, uh, Satam Prasangam Mama Birya Samvido. <clears throat> Uh, in the association of sat of the devotees, mama virya samvido, the uh, Krishna is talking about himself, Kapila is talking about himself, <laughs> and saying, <clears throat> uh, "My my heroism, mama virya, <laughs> uh, the Lord is the original hero." Uh, appearing in this world, doing heroic things, wonderful things to help the conditioned souls. He's a hero for our time, especially as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, heroically chanting Hare Krishna all over in his time, India, and then... Um, inspiring devotees to spread the chanting all over the world. Sarvatma, you've joined us. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Good morning. Bruce Scott, my friend. Bruce Scott, are you feeling better now? Not really, but now that I hear you, yes. Oh, my. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Natalia has also joined us. Krishna Ragini has joined us. Rajal, uh, Rajali Lavati is there. And Sita Sundari is here. Hari, hari. And Sita Sundari, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you wanted to show and tell something. Am I right? <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Um, hey, yes. Uh, hi, boy. I don't know if my microphone is on. It is. Um, it is. Ah, hi, Krishna. Hi, boy. Hi. I think because my in connection is too slow here. Is this working? Working. Working. Can you hear me? Working. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Krishna, Hearing. everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I would like to make a little show and tell. And I'm a little nervous. So please bear with me. No, no need to be nervous. They're just among and friends. It's a... Actually, uh, it's about your yeah, books. Your connection, uh, Sita Sundar, your connection is uh, breaking I know. up a lot. So it might be better if you turn okay turn um, your sure. video off. Although we like to see you, the video usually takes a while. Okay. Of... Wait. Okay. 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 So it's better now. Hi, Krishna. So now my microphone is off. Yes. Hi, Yes, okay. Is it working? Working. Okay, great. So, um, I have a little show and tell about books. And it's about your books. Uh -oh. So, I'm just going to yeah, I'm just going to turn the uh, the video on for a short moment to show which ones I have. Hold on. No. Here. 
this ones, no? Uh, mm, no. Wherever you turned it right. off before, the same, yes, now it's on. Okay, so it's these ones, these three ones. It's the one, Krishna's wonderful form, uh -huh. a guide for the perplexed. And it's, it's really great. I'm getting less and less perplexed the more I read. It's really, really wonderful. And there is Yama and Niyama and Field of Notes. Field Notes. Okay. Was that it? Okay. No, yeah, well, these three, no, <laughs> these three ones, I uh, wanted to speak a little bit about them um, because they are just, um, I mean, we all know how, how, how well you can write. You're just such an excellent author and everyone knows it. It's like, wow, he's such a good author. But it's so much more than that because these books are so practically helpful and it's a, uh, it's, it's like a pond of knowledge and wisdom. And these books, they're all like wonderful lotus flowers with so much inside of them, which, which is just so helpful to me also. So I just wanted to uh, to share about this a little bit. And um, I think one, one of the things I come back to when I think about your books is that it's the word hope. And who who who, who doesn't need hope? especially today in the world and so your books are real real hope givers i feel and uh it's just the way you are not preaching it's like a kind well-wishing encouragement just floating through the books and it's just so pleasant and it's something i really really appreciate and they are great christmas gifts so we have we had like christmas a special <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a well. Christmas is quite soon, so it may be a little late to to order the books now. Um, but if we have books at home, which I think everyone has in this round, we can give them for Christmas and order more for ourselves. And yeah, so there is also especially one thing. Uh, it's the one exercise in one of your books, um, which I'm doing right now. I started doing the exercise, and it's so helpful. So if, we, if I would keep that for myself, I would be a thief. So this uh, exercise is found in the book Yama and Niyama. It's on page 87. It's about the famous <laughs> letting go. And this is... Everyone is struggling with letting go and everyone is uh, wanting to let go. It's such a big theme and especially your way of explaining and also your exercise is so, so helpful. It's about, uh, you're writing about possess this possessiveness, not just things like, uh, I mean, everyone in a house with a basement knows what I'm talking about, so many things and and concepts and being right and so many things we feel possessive about and and then you write about also thoughts and emotions and that's something I need I would like to highlight um, and this is where the exercise comes in because some of the emotions which we have which are um, difficult and and actually even harmful. It's self self sabotage, as in putting ourselves down, and it's like we're supposed to to speak in a certain way as devotees, like I'm useless and I'm nobody, and and it's the kind of the way we we speak, and it's actually it can be harmful, and it's actually false because Krishna he doesn't see any one of his part and parcels as useful but the opposite, and he loves everyone. And my Guru Maharaj, he wrote, he writes in one of his books, when he hears a devotee saying that, I'm useful, I'm not worthy, he becomes useless. very, very sad. Useless. Hmm? Useless, useless, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Useless and, and, and not, nothing practically. He becomes very, very sad. 
because the way Krishna sees us is with so much worthiness and value. So it's it's actually also really false, and it can be very harmful. And that's uh, I can only speak for myself. Uh, that f when I do that, and I'm very good at doing that, it's not exactly uh, truly being humble in the way of approaching the Lord in a meek and humble way. Um, that's something completely different. So this um, talking about this kind of self sabotage and putting oneself down, uh, either uh, directly or or um, the kind of you know, viewing oneself as always negative and useless. So this is not helpful and it drains a lot. Um, and there is nothing good to come out of it. Oops, sorry, I'm turning it off. Okay, you're putting oneself down and, and thinking. Oops. Negatively about ourselves, and this is tendency in, in quite some degree. Oh, okay, is it okay now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so this is. I wanted to 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 speak about this because it's, um, um, yeah, it's it, it's a tendency in many, and yeah. So, it goes back then to your exercise. Um, of letting go, and so uh, you're you're mentioning many uh, many things, uh, many uh, examples like we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide, and if we keep our, if we hold our breath, we can actually die. So we have to let go. We breathe in, we breathe out, and anyone you know, if we have felt sometimes you know we can't breathe, it's very scary. It's very scary because we can actually die. It's, it's so toxic that we, you know, we, we can, it's very harmful. And this is the same thing um, we do when we when we keep things inside and we don't let go. So um, I have actually thought about that we do a little practice, practice an exercise together about this, if you like. Yes, no? Sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah so um <clears throat> like you write in your book also it's not about judging the thought it can be a thought it can be it can be some something small annoying or it can be something something bigger or a, a negative emotion anything which which just kind of not does not benefit us just pushes our down which is our stance. So, so um, we do that a lot and it's kind of automatic. You know, we may not always say it, you know, and think these thoughts, but it's kind of automatic and it's, um, yeah, it, it's the self-sabotage. So we can actually practice and retrain the brain, but we need to practice. So um, when we breathe in, we breathe in and we, we let's think about a thought or an emotion or something which is disturbing us, especially when we chant. Um, and then when we breathe out, we let it go. We ask ourselves, could I let this go? Yes, why not? I'm letting go of so many things, so why not? So we can do this. We could think of One, think of three. <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. So um, think, th take a moment and think about something disturbing, a, a thought, an emotion, something which kind of um, bothers you. We have it, and then when we breathe in. We connect to, could I let this go? And we, we're going to try to let it go. And when we breathe out, we let it go. Okay? So, breathe in. 
connect to the thought, the emotion. Let it go while breathing out. And maybe we let it go. Maybe not, and then we can practice again. So this is this is what I am uh, doing every day. And it's very helpful. I do it when I chant. Every time when my mind comes, you know, like do, 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 bugging and this and that, I stop and I do this exercise and I breathe out everything which is, keeps me away from hearing what I'm chanting. So I stop. I do the exercise and I keep walking chanting. So sometimes I stop like every 10 steps. <laughs> but it's very, very helpful. And yeah, so I hope it can be helpful to you also. And yeah, that was it. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Sita Sundari. <laughs> uh, aside from the advertisement for my books. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I think uh, I'll get more advertisement for my books. Just yesterday, out of curiosity, I looked on Amazon Kindle because Prasad uh, Hari mentioned that all the books are there now. And uh, yeah, there's there are 13 books available on Kindle now. Uh, so, you know, pra practically they're all there of the, uh, of the, the devotional books, as we would say. So it's good. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing from, uh, Canary Islands. Where is it specifically again? It's, it's Galdar. Wait. <laughs> uh, Galdar, it's uh, close to Las Palmas uh, on the Canary Island. Oh. It's a small little yeah. place without any tourists, except for us. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, what about Rajali Lavati? You wanted to say something since some weeks, I think. Yeah, I, I was thinking of saying it, but I'm not ready. I wanted to share about my new book, but it's not yet finished, so better not to talk about it. Um, but regarding the book Yama and Yama, I can also test it is very helpful. It is very important in this age when um, they defined people define yoga as something um, opposite to what it, to what yoga really is. Mm. Uh, I see that uh, people find yoga uh, like a tool to have better enjoyment and not to connect with God. So I think it's very important. Yeah, thank you. Oh, uh, I meant to mention also uh, what you were describing, Sita, is um, this practice of letting things go. That, that's elaborated um, in this um, book. Um, what is it called? Uh, oh, I'm forgetting. There's volume one and there's volume two. <laughs> and it's in, I think it's in volume two of the uh, Vidya Mala series. Um, there's a whole, there's a longer section discussing the Shanti, Shanti, Shanti practice, which is about consciously letting go. But you, you've um, pointed out this thing about this little practice that can be done of breathing in, then breathing out consciously, letting go as one breathes out. So that's very nice. Yeah. Good. What else? Oh, we have Ramananda Gopal with us. Any news from Nursinga Chetra, Singhachana? Well, thank you for, <laughs> for uh, asking. Well, we have the Sankirtan Festival soon, in end of the year, whoever want to come, join in. 
please, uh, yeah, please join in. And um, yeah, our boys, they are out on the street doing very good, distributing Sheila Popart's books. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. <laughs> you, uh, I think you haven't told us about your adventure in South Korea. Do you want but, to say something about that? Well, yeah, it was it was really a adventure in one sense. I mean, I was not oh, okay. Let me recollect this because in my world it's quite some time ago now. <laughs> yeah, South Korea was actually it's actually um, a happening uh, interfaith happening where I was part of for quite a while. They called uh, HVPL Heavenly World peace culture something like that and it is from an organization from korea uh and yeah they're, they're organizing some 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 kind of uh, in the religious dialogue that was mainly on zoom since maybe two years i'm part of that and then they kind of this year they invited uh to go to korea uh, for for the yearly meeting, something like that, and I said, well, thanks, thanks a lot, but I I don't think I have the I have the 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 money to go to Korea and you know be part of it. I, you know, I try to get politely out of it. And say, I'm sorry, I don't mind. So and then I said, well, we have uh, for some people we can fund it, and I was okay, but I don't think you you know because of this little, this little monkeys. I thought, you know, it's too much to leave my my wife with that, and also the silver and some But somehow or other, it came back and forth. And I, I think you remember we also spoke in this time, and you said maybe give it a try. So I went there, and basically, the first the first thing uh, they picked. I mean, they paid for the flight, and we had the 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 whole the whole congress was in in the in the Hyatt Hyatt Hotel in 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 Seoul. So what is quite a, a, a posh hotel you would say, right? And um yeah there were different conferences. They're very they are very respectful. They picked us up each single one of us who came were from different religion. I was there from from the Hare Krishna department from Germany, there was also a Chuta Nimai Prabhu from Frankfurt. Maybe somebody knows him, big Brahmachari. And so we were picked up in limousines and <laughs> all kind of stuff. We were like, what what happened here? And it was so well organized, everything. And um, yeah, and there were different group activities about you know religious. They were split in religious sections and then also in political sections because they're working with the with the UN and uh, you know different try to get basically the 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 they established the founder of them they established peace in Philippines when there was a conflict between Muslims and Christians and uh, so based on that they try to do different peace activities and try to establish peace world peace. Yeah, all good, all fine. This was all was about three days, and it was different talks on Hinduism and Islam and all of that. And the, on the final day, the final section was about Christianity. Now, this chairman of this uh, something Lee, I forgot. He's an elderly, elderly gentleman, and of course, it, it, it do course of time I researched something and I spoke also from there from this okay and um then he gave the final lecture on Christianity all the other Hindu lectures and uh, Islam lectures they were more in general about diff different things you know about the, the channel outlook of this religion. You know, nothing, nobody like that. this you don't do in, in the wave as the best, you know, otherwise there is no room for dialogue anymore. 
Yeah, and he gave the final talk then about three hours. And they showed also before how they basically they have a movement, ching ching, something like that. And it's quite popular in Korea because Korea is full of different Christian sects, actually. You know, one can think about, you know, if they're good or not is a different topic, but somehow they are quite organized and they do Bible, stud Bible studies and all of this stuff. And in this lecture of about three hours, he more or less established himself as the incarnation, what the, the revelation in the, in the, in the Bible, who familiar with it, the revelation of John speaks about that he is that basically Christ coming back. <laughs> so he, he more or less went in this direction that he said, well, actually, you know, I am the one they're speaking about and this and that and this and that. And all these followers, they were, became very enthusiastic in this class who were, where there was, let's say, like 500 people in total and let's say 300 at least they were, you know, from this organization. And then it more and more kind of appeared to me that, okay, this is what it's all about. This is what, you know, they try to establish basically um, their, yeah, their faith as, as supreme. And I had different, you know, we were sitting in this room beside me that was uh, sitting, uh, I guess, an Islamic person as well. He had a, he had a head, we didn't speak, he didn't speak so good English. They had all translation organized, but he also kept of kind of moving in his chair a little bit uncomfortable. And I, I saw different. There was also many uh, uh, devotees from from Eco Village in Mumbai, and uh, some from America, some from Finland, from Estonia. But different devotees we had there, and we had, yeah, when we met, of course, when devotees meet, is always some joyful experience. There were also people from the Gaudiya Mat. Um, yeah, so some something like that. And everybody was a little bit like, uh, really? You know, and it was like three hours. And uh, yeah, this was then the feeling I left before I was in the, the whole time because it was well organized. And I thought that, okay, yeah, religion's responsible for wars and for conflicts, basically. And yeah, it's good to speak about it and yeah, maybe do some action. And I thought, okay, it's a, it's a positive thing to be part of. But in the end, when it came out, like, this is, you know, this is how you all should be, actually, you know, that's the solution. Then was for me a little bit off-putting and I thought, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not so inspired to work with this organization directly anymore because yeah it, it just came came out they made us also beforehand kind of sign different things how we will be involved more in in more activities and something like that so it was yeah it really had them in the end i really had the feeling some kind of yeah the, we were kind of trapped in in this in this situation and it took much of, 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 of us okay, knowing how, how they all bring us together and something like that. I look back with mixed feelings. I'm I'm happy that I did it because you know, even in the beginning from the from the GBC there were different options about this, what to do with this people, and uh many people encouraged me also said let's do it, you know, whatever, including you, but yeah, in the end, I was a little bit like, hmm, when I was flying back with, uh, together with Achuta Nimai, we, we, yeah, we were a little bit disappointed, maybe not the right word in English, but we were a little bit uh, disillusioned, maybe, something like that. <laughs> so although it was well organized and many things what I thought, okay, you know, this, they're making good points. And I met so many different people, they were uh so interested because we you know i i went there with dodi and tilak and everything as you know whatever and all these religious people is always a very crucial or very nice actually moment when people open their heart into speaking about god it doesn't matter what faith it is and i really believe that 
but yeah yeah it was a little bit shameful that it was then in the end put all under this under this logo of this of this one institution and yeah it's a shame a little bit sorry about it because i thought something something good can come out of when people when religious institutions come together and try to make something for the betterment of the world they actually it's a duty they actually should do this we all should work on this together and i think we as as the Hare krishna movement whatever institution we we put us in or gaudiya mat or iskan or whatever but i think we have lots to to say about in the religious dialogue because actually the movement of chaitanya mahaprabhu is a in the religious dialogue in one sense as far as i perceive it uh -huh. yeah so sorry good so the basic um the essential message from you, I think, is been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. As you as you suggested beforehand, and it was like, like, yeah, it was like this. If you know, if somebody have some contact with this organization, well, make your own experiences. We always had good online meetings with where I also made contacts and um, whatever. Certainly, there's some, you know, and people who support this organization. I think they really, they really want to do something for peace. But I'm, I'm, I'm always curious uh, when, when something then is pulled in one direction. I don't know. I think it has something to do with my past, growing up in East Germany or something like that. I was afraid joining ISKCON for sure when back in the days. But um, yeah, so don't, you know, don't, yeah, I'm just don't, it didn't click with me in this moment and any more than I thought, okay, that's now. Sorry, I think, thank you. Yeah. One, one thought occurs to me uh, as, as an interfaith dialogue, so-called. Um, mm. I remember many years ago, one very prominent uh, Muslim author gave a, a lecture when I was at Graduate Theological Union. Um, very, very learned scholar, Sayyid Nasser. Um, and he was saying that whenever there is interfaith dialogue, it's actually a trialogue there's always an invisible partner. And that invisible partner, he didn't say is God. He said the invisible partner is uh, the secular world. And what it yeah. sounds like, what you're describing, this uh, Christian or quasi-Christian organization, in a sense, what they're trying to do is remove uh, the secular partner yeah. and just make themselves the whole. Uh, yeah. They're sort of trying to create their own universe uh, of so-called yeah. dialogue, um, but it doesn't really work. <laughs> and no, and, exactly. who's, and yeah. who's listening to them in Israel and Gaza right now? <laughs> you know exactly, exactly what's the contribution then and of course anyway yeah you could not better say it it's 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 really it's like this there's you know this in the in the bible they say uh, uh um there's this saying in the bible as soon two people come together in my name i will be amongst them and this mm -hmm. basically is the, the the core of the sankatan movement and everybody would join in doesn't matter which from which faith they come you know, we share the same God all together. And it's always such a blissful, very special moment when you come together with religious people or spiritual people and they open their heart and you can, they give them a little glimpse inside their heart where you can see, wow, God is at work. You yeah. know? And then you can reflect back on your side and you can see, wow, you know, it's it's really happening. And it's so, I think it would be so, so crucial if really religions come together without any as you say, you know, any, any agenda to, to kind of really share God together and bring God 
back in society. I think this is really, really what is missing. Most of the interreligious dialogues, they're just speaking from the institution. You know, there's no, they're speaking, okay, we are, we are this church and that church, but it's all about church. It's nowhere they don't speak about God. But when, when you meet them individually, then you make amazing experience. And this is what I also had there, what I really relished that the individuals, what I met, yeah, I could, you know, I was impressed by them and yeah. I could feel that they were impressed by me. Yeah. So for example, in the, in the, in the morning, in the morning, we had to, they had to, uh, to serve breakfast in the Hyatt Hotel. I mean, it was like really amazing. You could just go, you know, and even as a vegetarian, you had so much different foods and whatever. So, but, you know, we have to offer it. So what I, what I did, I brought my little, you know, I brought my little gear rudge, <laughs> the, you know, and he was eating everything what I was eating and I carried them down. And in the lift, or how you say, yeah, the, 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 the elevator, yeah. You know, and wherever I, I met people and I said, what is this, you know, and, and on the basis of that, I could explain to them <laughs> so much about religion. I had then a hard time to come for time for breakfast sometimes, you know, that it was not too late. So, I you bring know, my God to breakfast. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they have to offer something, but this is the, you know, I can tell them about bhakti and about our, and then they say, well, that's interesting. We have also, we do this and that and it's like well yeah we we really share the same the same thing although we look different we maybe have different rituals but you know we we have all the we have all the same yeah it's amazing it was a good experience but with a with a kind of a, a strange ending and when i came back of course we entered immediately into this promotsova festival we also wanted to t talk about it but it just went then more in the back and even when you ask now i had to Oh, oh, yeah, there was this. Yeah, right, I was in Korea. What happened there? Yeah, <laughs> so I had to kind of dig it out a little bit of my brain. Maybe therefore it came a little bit. But yeah, thank well, you for your... Hi, thanks for sharing. Uh, Rajali Lamati, you said you have something you want to share. Yes, because I wanted to say that Guru knows best. So uh, I really have something to share. Because a few seconds ago, I got uh, the title uh, of the History in Flux. This is a journal of history department in Pula, where you also taught. Uh, uh, it's, it's not just seminars, but uh, all um, subjects. Uh, a few years ago and last uh, two years ago, you taught about Gandhi. And now this paper is published. It's not yet published, but in two weeks will be. Uh, so far, I can share uh, just a moment. Just a moment, please. Just now coming. <laughs> really, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I don't know how to share this. Well, you click the green button and then you find which screen has what you want to show. Yes. And you select that and then you click mm -hmm. share. Okay. It's there somewhere. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. While you're looking for it, I can explain. This yes. article on Gandhi is um, about the film Gandhi. Yes. And I wrote this uh, literally decades ago. <laughs> Um, when I went back to university, actually, I wrote it while I was uh, staying with Sarvatman. Must have been while I was there. Um, I I took one course it called uh, Religion and Film in the Department of Religion. It was a very interesting course. 
we watched, and it was an excuse to watch films. And uh, we had to write a term paper, and they said, write anything you want, just something about religion and film. Oh, here it is. Okay. So. Yes, your paper is what? Yeah. The um, man is the message, civil religion in Gandhi. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I thought uh, to write about this film. So I watched the film, I made notes, I did bit of research on the film, did a bit of research on Gandhi. And uh, I also made a kind of crazy comparison of the film Gandhi to, um, what's the name of the... Uh, Lenny uh, Reifenstahl, Tri Triumph of the Will. The Triumph of the Will, Triumph des Villains, yeah. Yeah, this propaganda film <laughs> from the Nazi time. I made a comparison of the two, <laughs> which is an unlikely comparison. But anyway, I did it. And uh, yeah, I got a good grade for the paper. And then I think I showed it to uh, my Sanskrit professor. I don't remember, but... I, I met uh, Piku, Pico, Pika, uh, what was her name? Anyway, I forget now. Is a, a fairly well-known travel author, uh, travel writer, uh, the son of my Sanskrit instructor. Um, and... Uh, I asked him if he has any ideas how I might publish this. And he gave one or two ideas, but I never pursued it. And then, uh, and then Rajali Lovett said, we have this journal. Could you give some journal, some paper to publish it? And I sort of dusted off my hard drive. <laughs> And there was this paper, which I never had published. And uh, they accepted it, it with a, a bit of, we did a bit of a minor editing, but basically they accepted it. Yes. So nice, it thank was, you for, for arranging this. Thank you for sending this paper. It will be online in two weeks, I think. So everybody could read it if they want. Oh, it'll be open access? Online. Yes, yes, open access through okay. the Croatian um, base, which is called Hrčak. Uh -huh. Speaking of publications in academic journals, I just read two days ago that uh, Albert Einstein published, I think the number was 238 academic papers. Um, that's a lot. Uh, it was in a it was in a series of little statistics to make a point, uh, but just for the statistics point, uh, if I can remember now, um, Mozart wrote uh, six hundred works. And um, Johann Sebastian Bach, Sarvatma, you must know how many works Bach wrote. Do you know? Uh, just sacred cantatas. He wrote over 600. Just the sacred cantatas. Whoa. Yeah, that doesn't count um, chamber pieces, piano pieces, uh, um mm -hmm. Profane, not, not profane, but secular cantatas, organ works. Is basically I borrow some friend's collection of Bach complete works, and it was um, close to two hundred CDs. <laughs> well, it was it was his job. He was the chapelmeister for Leipzig, yeah. 
So he basically he had to publish, I think it was once a week or once a month. The, the I, had think, to... I think once a week he had to come up with some. Yeah, and he borrowed. I mean, I listened to it four times back to back and I could see that he borrowed from himself to write yeah. cantatas. It was... Yeah, it yeah. Was, no, it's necessary. Anyway, prolific. And and he had uh, an interesting detail. He had uh, a lot of children. Oh, and he was he was very original uh, in his musical compositions. But when he came from family life, he ran out of imagination because five of his children were called Johannes, and three of his <laughs> girls were called Johanna. So, <laughs> so when he got to family life, he ran out of imagination. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I read that he produced uh, 1,000, uh, yeah, I think it was 1,000 different pieces. That's what I read. And um, another trivia is that Picasso produced some 20,000 works. I think that includes all of his quick sketches. He would just, you know, do something in three minutes and but it, it may have also included uh, works by his students because I read that if he approved something that one of his students did, he would sign it with his name. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess he considered a favor to his student, but in any case. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, We've gone off on a bit of a tangent now. I think it's time to read some Bhagavatam. What do you think? Yes, Bhagavatam. And what I was thinking is, um, I was reminded the other day of the verse which Srila Prabhupada uh, read and then discussed at my initiation. Uh, this is... I guess I can share this. Um, this is Canto 1, Chapter 1, Verse 15. Hold on. Share. Yeah. So, Yat Pada Sanshrayasuda Munaya Prashamayana Sadya Punan Tupasprishta Svardun Yapo Anusevaya Osuta. Those great sages who have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord can at once sanctify those who come in touch with them, whereas the waters of the Ganges can sanctify only after prolonged use. Uh, so there's a contrast made. Uh, sadhya means at once. Punanti uh, means, here it's translated sanctify, it can also mean purify. Um, Upasprishta, by uh, sprishta means touched. Uh, so upasprishta by association. Sprishta comes from sparsha, uh, or it's the other way around. Spr anyway, touching. Uh, and Svarduni Apo Apaha. Uh, Svarduni is a name for the Ganga River. Anusevaya, by ongoing service. So ongoing service. Uh, to the water of the Ganga by bathing is also kind of, you're touching the water. And that's that's considered to be sort of, how to say, standard pious life is to bathe in the Ganga. You want to be seen as a pious person, go bathe in the Ganga and do that three times a day. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and don't just do it when it's nice and warm, but do it also in the middle of winter. Then you're, then you get your uh, pi piety badge. <clears throat> so here a contrast is being made uh, that if we just uh, connect with the munis, which is also interest interesting because the word muni, uh, he translates as great sage, sages, munaya. Um, we have the word mona. So mona means silence. Mona vrata. It's a, uh, one of the vratas one can make just to zip the lips for a given amount of time. That was kind of understood to be the problem. It's, it's mentioned in the Mahabharata that um, when Shamika Rishi was sitting and meditating and Maharaj Brikshit came and um, wanted, you know, to get relief from his thirst and his hunger, the problem was that Shamika Rishi had made a vow of silence. And he's not going to break the vow, even if it's the emperor of the world coming to him. <laughs> um, of course, we skeptics might say, well, why didn't he just kind of make some gestures like, uh, oh, welcome, please sit down, just wait five minutes and I'll get to you or, or you know, something like that. He doesn't do anything. He just keeps meditating. Anyway, Muni uh, kind of has this association of silence, um, but it's also associated with the idea of having one's own ideas, be, having original ideas, unique ideas. Uh, and in any case, the Munis, it's, a, it's saying here, they can purify immediately. But if we take this idea of uh, the Muni as one with original ideas, uh, with their own unique idea, um, this leads me into a theme that I've been uh, sort of going on about sometimes, not here. We just had a talk um, night before last in Mendoza, after I had been reading about creativity, I couldn't resist to say something about it in the class and speaking on Bhagavad Gita, chapter three and a bit of chapter four. And I managed to find a way to talk about creativity in relation. And in, for that, the devotees just kind of stared back at me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, the point I wanted to make was, I think, a fairly simple one, which is uh, yagya, sacrifice, is uh, the solution to the karma problem, as described in chapter 3 of the Gita. Um, and how to do yagya, Krishna gives a few suggestions. Uh, in the fourth chapter, in the later part of the fourth chapter. Um, and we understand from our acharyas, and especially from Lord Chaitanya, that uh, um, we can save a lot of time and trouble trying to figure out how to do yagya if we understand it's about san sankirtan. But then how to do sankirtan? And here is where I think uh, the creativity factor can come in. But creativity is, um, there's a bit of a science to it. There's been a lot of research on it. Um, and I just made some notes here. Let's see how much time we have. Okay, we have some time. Um, I made some notes from a book called the Creative Thinker's Toolkit. Sounds like a, a self-help book. Um, 
And I went to lecture number five of this book, Principles for Unleashing Your Imagination. Unleashing Your Imagination. And this is where I think uh, societies of devotees could uh, learn something because uh, sometimes I think we suffer from a poverty in the area of imagination. So one point he makes is um, that balance is a good idea, balance of three things, namely knowledge, imagination, and evaluation. Uh, what he's focusing on, uh, the author here, Puccio is his name, sounds Italian, um, is uh, when we become conscious of, aware of, or are concerned about solving a problem. He's saying, you, you have a problem. All right, so what? Well, um, how to solve it? How to do something about it? Um, first, have some knowledge about the situation and um, cultivate imagination about how to resolve it. I think I will close this now. And, um, and be ready to evaluate, be ready to judge your, um, your solution or your idea. And he says that creativity is a function of these three plus a fourth function. And what is that fourth function? It's attitude. What is your attitude to the whole thing? Do you want to solve it? Do you want to do something you know, beneficial uh, in the given situation? So if there's a positive, yes, let's do something good attitude, and there's a balance of knowledge and of imagination and ability to evaluate, then there can be creativity. There can be some fresh um, ideas uh, which can be then implemented. Um, he gives an example. He says, uh, he says, creativity is something that we all have uh, and we all do, uh, generally unconsciously, just in the course of our lives. Uh, should I um, eat toast with peanut butter or should I eat toast with uh, jelly or should I eat toast with both? Um, we're being minimally creative. So he says, creativity is like breathe, breathing. Most of the time, we don't think about our breathing. However, it is possible to breathe consciously. And of course, that's what pranayama is about in the yoga practices. So he's saying, as we can breathe deliberately, we can also be deliberately creative. But how to do that? Well, two things, uh, which I'll mention now. One is first divergent thinking. And then after divergent thinking, which has four stages, uh, comes convergent thinking. Divergent means like two roads diverge in a lonely wood, as uh, Robert Frost, the American poet, put it. Uh, they go apart from each other. And converge means coming together, uh, like um, small rivers coming together, converging and making a larger river. Um, 
So again, we're talking about munis, and we're and um, Sutta Goswami is saying association with munis is a good idea. <laughs> there can be a quick result from association, but with which kind of muni? Uh, that's specified to get back to the verse. Munayaha prashamayana. Um, munis who are absorbed in devotion to the Supreme. So, um, okay, the first, first step in divergent thinking is to defer judgment. To defer judgment. Uh, he says this is essential for everything else. Um, we may know this from the exercise of what's called brainstorming in English. You have a problem, you get together, you do a brainstorm. Let's try this, let's try that, let's try the other. And you note down all the, all the ideas that everyone has without judging them. You just, okay, that's a crazy idea, doesn't matter, write it down. Another crazy idea, another crazy idea, lots of crazy ideas, no judgment. So what he's saying is that we can cultivate a, um, individually ourselves um, a sort of readiness to think up crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> about uh, whatever it is that is concerning us. Uh, he mentions one experiment that was done where students uh, were divided in two groups. One group was, um, both groups were given the same problem to address and one group was told that they should suspend their judgment and come up with ideas. And the other group, we might call them the control group as a scientific thing, uh, were told, they were not told to suspend judgment, they were told, come up with good ideas. So then each group went off on their own with their problem and they discussed and they came back after writing down um, their ideas. And the group that had good ideas or were told come up with good ideas, they came up with a few ideas which they considered good. But uh, the group that was told to suspend their judgment, they come, came up with many more ideas that were good. They came up with more good ideas than the group that had been told come up with good ideas. Anyway, the point is, suspend judgment is a good first step. And that's difficult for us. It's difficult for us because, um, I don't know why, because <laughs> we want to, um, I think it has to do with a sense of um, the impulse to control. We want to be in control at all times. And so if a crazy idea comes, we want to shoot it down as soon as possible before somebody else thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, somewhat related to this first uh, aspect of divergent thinking, so there's divergent judgment, and then the, the next thing is go for quantity. And this is where the statistics I told about Picasso and Bach and Mozart and Einstein, where this came from, is um, have lots of ideas 
And from those lots of ideas, something is going to be a good idea. And uh, he told some more statistics from the business world. Uh, um, and you see this also with, I don't know, many professional photographers. They just take a lot of photographs. And then out of their many photographs, they maybe choose one or two as being especially good. So go for quantity. Don't be afraid to just make a long list of whatever it is you're thinking about. Shall I continue with this or is this enough for now? Tia says yes. Yeah? Okay. Do you have any, do you have any more crazy ideas? <laughs> yeah, a lot of crazy ideas here. Okay. So we have defer judgment, second, go for quantity, third, make connections. So this is still part of divergent thinking. So we're just, we're going off and out and away from conventional thinking to divergent thinking. Make connections. What does that mean? That means um, look for past ideas, and these can come from any source. The example he gives is flip through a magazine like uh, National Geographic and look at pictures and see if any of those photos in National Geographic uh, spur your thinking uh, and see if you can make any connections that way. Um, so making connections with uh, the quantity of ideas that you've made, which you haven't been making any judgment about. And then the fourth, um, step in this is seek novelty in what um, he calls blue sky thinking. Uh, novelty means something new, something, something different. And here is, I think, a very interesting point. He says, wild ideas can be tamed. In other words, instead of starting with a tame idea, which may be too tame and won't get you anywhere and makes everyone go to sleep, um, start with a wild idea. And OK, maybe it's too wild. Maybe it's totally off the charts. But um, wild ideas can be worked on. They can be worked over to make them manageable. Yeah. So that was about divergent thinking. Um, I feel like diverging from this thinking right now <laughs> before going on to convergent thinking, um, which maybe we can do next time. I don't want to overload you with these things, but you might make an experiment. Take something as a what you consider uh, a problem, something practical, um, and uh, yeah, do some non-judging as you consider different options, how this might be uh, dealt with. Don't set, don't um, don't settle for one idea. Um, maybe you know, start with ten ideas. I always remember the time we were trying to design uh, the temple at Singachalam, and um, me being a, a frustrated wannabe architect, <laughs> I was trying to 
work it out. And uh, we had some very specific uh, requirements and limitations. The structure of the bu building already existed and we couldn't change that. So uh, what to do? Well, um, uh, what's his name now? Just slipped my mind. The, the famous uh, ISKCON architect came visiting, just so happened. Uh, Saurabh, yes, Saurabh Swami. He came and we thought, wow, he's coming. He's going to give us the solution. And uh, so I showed him some little sketches that we had made. And I said, uh, we've made 10 different designs and none of them feel right. And he just laughed and he said, you have to be ready to make a hundred designs. Then you can maybe start to work on something uh, that will actually work. Yeah. So um, back to the point I was making two nights ago. <laughs> Uh, Krishna says, perform sacrifice, right, how to do it. Um, the Vedic literature gives extreme detail about how sacrifices were performed in sacrificial times. <laughs> in Treta Yuga, we might say. Um, try to follow them, good luck. Uh, but the the instruction is still there. It hasn't changed. Perform sacrifice. How to do it. Um, we have lots of important guidelines from our acharyas. And still, my point, my point is this. Uh, still, we have to work out the details. Um, we still have to do so much. And within that working out the details, there's so much room for... Uh, creativity but don't wait until somebody works it out for you figure out for yourself or figure out with one other person or um, maybe with even three as soon as you get more than three in the room <laughs> the problems start <laughs> more problems than you want no just I'm just joking. Uh, Sankirtan means Sam Kirtan, everyone together. The more, the merrier. <clears throat> uh, Janani Vas has given what I guess is a link to where you can find the book. Is that what it is? Oh, I was going to ask you, Doug, if you want to tell us about snoot farms, but um, maybe we can save it for next time. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, maybe next time, yeah, I can let everyone know. Okay. Um, he has a very nice little sanctuary, farm sanctuary, but I won't steal his thunder, but stay tuned for next time. Uh, meanwhile, what are we doing next week? Uh-oh, next week is yes. trouble. Yes. Next week is big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so I think next week, uh, instead of Saturday Sangha, for whoever wants to join, uh, there's going to be a sort of an online birthday party. And uh, if you want to join that, you're welcome. It'll be online and it's also going to be live. Yeah, yeah here in Cordoba. Um, so yeah, it'll have a it'll have this Argentine flavor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Sarvatma, I know, I know you never want to go to uh, back to Argentina ever again. That's what you told me. Is that still the case? 
Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> well, then we won't uh, require you <laughs> to attend next week unless you want to uh, feel, well, I don't know, online feel what it's like to be in Cordova. Yeah, virtually is not a problem. Virtually is not a problem. <laughs> okay. All right. On that happy note, thank you all for joining us today and have a wonderful week and chant and be happy and keep sane and, um, and don't complain. <laughs> Shila Prabhupada ki jai ananta kotash the ki jai nitai gor nine. Adi bol. Adi Krishna Guru Maharaj. Adi Krishna family. Adi bol. Adi Krishna. Adi Krishna. Jai all glories. All glories assemble devotees. Adi. Adi.